Hello guys, how are you doing today? My name is Steven Akinta. I'm Africa's most sought after investment coach in Australia and Tukuno. I'm live here in um, Tel Aviv in Israel. And so we're going to be looking at um, how to start your real estate development company with uh, 100 million or less. You know, a lot of people have asked me this question. They want to start their real estate company. They are wondering how do they go about it? What's the process they need to use? Uh, people ask me question of how do I start my own real estate company uh, so that we buy land, we sell land, we, uh, and people are able to do business with our company. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on today. And as our usual tradition is, tell me your name, tell me the city that you are watching from, your name and your city. I always like to know the name and the city that you are watching from. Um, I also like you to share this video, um, share it at least 20 times because it's just going to be life changing, empowering. You know the funny thing, I've never taught this before. So this is my first time mm -hmm. of treating this topic. And so it's very special, very important. I can see Akin Stawo. You know, hello, how are you, Akin? Good to see you. Sukom Niolani, how are you today, sir? Good to see you. Thank you for joining. And you are very much welcome. Who else is here? Tell me your name and your city. Bakari Tenitope from Lagos City. How is Lagos? How is San Olu today? <laughs> okay. Um, good to see you and thank you for joining. Okay, please share this video as many times as you can. Uh, copy the link of this video and share it again and again. Um, I can see Anthony from Lekki. Good to see you, Anthony. Good to see you. You're all welcome. So first thing you want to do, and I think this is very important, is to have your capital on ground. So a lot of people have chatted me up that they want to start their real estate company. What they realize is that many people they've approached to teach them how to own their own real estate development companies are not willing to teach them. You know, many of them are reluctant. Many of them are even saying, why will I teach you? How to run my, uh, you know, how to start a real estate company. So uh, I've been helping a lot of people. I've mentored series of people who have started their real estate company, and I still do that. By the way, let me put disclaimer: it's not free. <laughs> okay, I don't mentor for free. I charge for it. For those that have had to mentor one on one to start their real estate company, I charge for it, and it's not a small fee. But I'm going to be giving you like a, um, a brief process that you need to go through if this is what you want to do, okay? What is the brief process? By the way, as you're joining, tell me your name, tell me your city. I'd like you to share this video as many times as you can on all your WhatsApp group, Facebook group. I can see David from Abu Dhabi. Good to see you. Alami Dave from Korodu. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for sharing. So, number one thing you want to do, if you're sure you already have your capital, um, at least you're looking at 100 million should be good enough. Now, I'm, at the end of this broadcast, I'm going to be sharing with you how you may have to do this with less than 100 million. But with 100 million, you're comfortable to start something. Um, but remind me to share with you at the end of this broadcast how you may start this with maybe something lesser, a little bit lesser, that be 70 or 50 million. Um, I'll share that with you. First thing you want to do is to register the real estate company, okay? Um, register the company with CAC. The good news now with registering your company with CAC is very easy, it's now automated, and you can do that. That's with Nigerian, um, you know, um, registration company, it's called CAC. Now, you want to register as a limited liability company and not a sole proprietorship, okay? Register as a limited liability company. Um, that is the first thing you want to do. And this is very easy. You get a lawyer, in a matter of three weeks, you can get this done. Okay, the next thing you want to do is to um, cons consult, 
companies to, you know to help you get an office location now it depends on what you're trying to do if you're focusing on doing properties on the island then you can situate your office on the island like somewhere in Lekki or somewhere along Lekki Express Road okay um, you don't need anything over fancy food at the beginning two room three room it's okay to start with remember you're just starting and like I've always said life is in phases when I size leave your size part-time so you just get a very decent office space it's good it's good enough number three you want to get an HR company to help you um, you know do some recruitment let me tell you one of the biggest challenge of real estate company is, uh, is staffing right it's one of the biggest biggest challenge you can face going to real estate and i'll tell you the reasons why number one is the fact that um a survey just came out and showed that 47 nigerians 47 percent of nigerian workforce do not last six months leave their job in six months now real estate is so sensitive that customers get worried when they talk to GD today and tomorrow they are talking to Sheyi. It's almost as if something is going on. And remember, a, a good number of your customers will be Nigerians in diaspora who have been doing working in the same company for the last 10 years, some of them for the last 20 years. So they won't understand how today they talk to somebody else, tomorrow they're talking to somebody else. And you know the turnover rate is very high. But that's the reality in Nigeria. So you probably want to get a good you know, HR firm that can do a good job in getting you some of the best people. And part of the factors they probably will consider are people who can stay longer. Okay, I'm not enjoying this, by the way. Let me be sure you, uh, you know, let me be sure I'm saying something you want to hear. Or, or you guys don't like this topic. Okay, should I teach you another topic? If you're enjoying this, can you say I'm enjoying this? Okay, if you want me to take another topic, let me know. I mean, I'm just focusing on what I feel um, I've gotten as a demand by some of you who have reached out to me to say, I have several properties in Nigeria, but my goal is not even just buying properties for me alone anymore. My goal is how can I help people own their uh, how can i help people own their own properties by starting my own real estate by having my own estates i've met people if i remember a particular was it 2016 i was in in san antonio when i went for a training on real estate and i met um, a wonderful doctor who had put together a group of nigerian doctors in texas and they gathered money over 200 million we're trying to start real estate in Bajuleki, and they were shocked how they were, I mean, literally swindled, okay? I mean, they struggled to even get back 100 million out of the 200 million. The man, the wife, they said they don't even want to ever hear anything property again. They are never sure they want to do it again and all of that. And, you know, of course, I showed, showed them this formula I'm teaching you. And they were like, I mean, that's what most people always say. Where have you been? Why am I just meeting you? How come I've not met you all this world? Always get that 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 statement. So, and and some of what I shared with them is what I'm sharing with you. So number three, H your your HR. You want to get a firm to help you get good people um, that can work with you. I mean, one of my biggest regret when it comes to this real estate business had been some 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 team I've employed that were just disappointed. Okay, and so you want to get good people, but, but thank God, you know, you get better, and that's one of the advantages of having a mentor. That's one of the advantages of um, learning from someone like me who have been there, because I will be able to tell you the mistakes I made and how you shouldn't make such mistakes, uh, the things to avoid, the things to, you know, make sure you do not do. I like you as you're joining me to share this video, please, 20 times. Okay. Uh, copy this link, paste it on all your Facebook group, paste it on all your WhatsApp group. Um, share this video as many times as you can. I want this video to go viral. So share it. Okay. Um, how do you do? Copy this link, create a Facebook party on this video. Share it on all Facebook group, all WhatsApp group, all LinkedIn group. Gift from Abuja. I see you. Thank you for joining. So, number four. 
get a management consultant firm okay uh, and i think this is very important you need a management consultant firm um, who will be able to teach you because real estate is capital intensive um, you need a good management company to work with you. We have a, a very great management company that works with us. It's one of the reasons why some of you notice I travel all over the world and relax because we have consulting firm that work with the in-house staff and make sure the structure work, the system work, and what we've put together works. Okay, and I think it's very, very important. At the beginning, I didn't know the importance of what I'm teaching you now, but I know that, okay, and I use that. So you want to see, and, and let me tell you, don't be scared with all these things I'm saying. There are always people you can work with at your level, okay? Don't say, oh, my husband consultant firm, oh, how much you like price, price water cooper? Oh, no, there are smaller, you know, agencies, smaller companies um, that can take something reasonable from you and can still work with your company and build a good system, a good structure for your company. So you want to get a management consulting firm. That's number number what? Number four. Number five, you want to get a branding firm, a PR and a branding firm. You see, one thing you need to know, I mean, I made this mistake in real estate starting out. My focus was just buying land, right? My focus was just you know, let's just get the land. Let's be sure we have the land. Let's put all the money buying the land. And it, it took me a while to realize that real estate business is the same thing as car business. You know, when you're marketing cars, it's amoju, let me say it in Yoruba, amoju. In other words, it is a disease of the eye. <laughs> okay. In other words, real estate is about what people see. Your ability to convince somebody to buy a property is a function of what they see, the quality of what they see, the picture, the perception of what they see. And it's as simple as that. Same thing with car, right? What will make anybody buy a car is the picture of the car, the leather, the picture of the car running. And you know, you are seeing this perception of, oh, you cruise with this car. The same thing with real estate. People buy based on what they are seeing. So, I didn't know that a lot has to be invested in using, doing videos, drone shooting, um, you know, documentaries about the property, you know, um, you know, presenting the property in a fantastic way that people will be comfortable and say, you know what, even if the place doesn't look like, you know, it now, based on what I've seen in 3D, based on what I've seen also um, on ground, I know this will mean business and they're going to deliver. So you need to get a company that can help you do that. It took me a whole lot of research to realize that what makes great companies great is not just structure. Actually, it's marketing, it's branding. Okay, it's the ability to brand the firm in an exceptional way. What's the difference between Pepsi and Coca-Cola? Right, in fact, research has shown that Pepsi tastes better than Coca-Cola. So why are people still taking Coca-Cola? Why are people obsessed about Coca-Cola? You see, Coca-Cola got something very powerful since inception, branding. They were able to brand Coca-Cola that the secret recipe they were using for Coca-Cola to start with is secret. You know, nobody else has it. They've locked it up in the vault. It's invincible. It's this, it's this. They create so much hype around coke and all their marketing all their branding is just exceptional you're talking of marketing branding strategies pr strategies that are just out of this world i don't care who you are what color you you know you are what religion you are you like coke coke is second to the name of jesus in branding is the most known brand in the world after jesus christ I mean, that's that's a big feat okay and i used to think it was just it was the drink it was all that until you know did some research went to coca-cola head office you know check their adverts since the 1800s okay just after they they, they they start they launched and i got to realize why they were thick so same thing with real estate you want to get a good brand and pr firm that can position you out there in an exceptional way. What I'm teaching you, trust me, 
you should be thanking me if you truly want to you know start a real estate firm okay because these are not things you just find out okay and by the way if you're enjoying this can you type i'm enjoying this come on talk to me and i wonder why we're still 27 28 people watching this okay why have we not reached 100 people right so guys you need to know that whenever we do this facebook live right um your ability to share and the more response i get the more encouraged i am that the topic i'm treating is needed and that people wanted it and that it's adding value to people okay because it's very important to know that my job here is to add value and there's just no point teaching you what you don't want to hear so when you join and you are sure you like what i'm teaching you're sure what i'm teaching is adding value to you the least you can do is to share the video okay copy the link paste it on all your facebook group or your whatsapp group or your linkedin group create a facebook party and invite your friends to the video i think it's the least that you can do okay guys i think it's the least you can do so aside telling me you enjoyed it which i appreciate i like you to let me know if you're enjoying it but more importantly i want you to share the video it's critical um so number six get a marketing marketing partners now so in real estate um your job is not to employ 20 marketers 50 marketers no your job is to employ as many independent marketers as possible because our company have over 750 right now and we're growing that to 100,000 very soon we've just built a sales phone now and we're growing massively the team of marketers for our company you see the oxygen of your real estate firm is your marketing team and they don't need to be full-time i'm talking about the hr company of a firm i'm talking about the accountant in a company i'm talking of the uh, you know all these people matters because when it comes to real estate is a business of trust is somebody refers somebody is somebody saying something to somebody is you know somebody at work saying ah i just bought a land from gtech so you to go and buy your own that's how they sell real estate it has nothing to do with if you like spend all your money on tv at that radio at that people don't buy except somebody is referring them somebody is saying i have bought i trust them they are real that's what makes people buy so you then realize that you need a like an army <laughs> a massive army of people out there you know so imagine one individual is is a colleague at work says he should buy his uncle calling that he should buy from same company right somebody else also somewhere is chatting him up and say i buy so before you know it there is a perception that okay this is a real company we can do business with so when you come to real estate you need a strong marketing team the more the better the more the merrier okay and there are some people who have put themselves together uh, to form marketing companies some of them have 20,000 people under them if you are able to attract such we do sometimes difficult to attract such people but if you're able to attract them fine but if not you can build your own marketing team from scratch just know a team of independent marketers you must have amazing incentives for them for example we are launching an amazing uh, promo um, where we anybody who is able to market our company's property um, to the tune of as little as five million to ten million we get an all expense paid trip to Dubai okay these are some type of incentives that you want to be using to kind of attract these people get these people to start selling for you at least people want to go to dubai without doing a full-time job so imagine you are you're not doing something on a full-time you're just sharing on your facebook on your whatsapp on your social media you get commission you go on an expense pay trip you know people just can you know are excited about things like that so you want to push those kind of things for them okay I, if you're enjoying this let me know that you're enjoying this please share this video uh, you know at least 20 times okay share as many times as you can and those of you just joining us tell me your name and your city i like to know uh, where you're joining me from my name is stephen akinta i'm africa's most sought after investment coach i'm a serial entrepreneur i'm the mbc of gtex homes and i'm sharing with you how to start your own estate with even as little as 100 million or less number seven get a mentor 
You see, you cannot start your real estate development firm without a mentor. You you are dead. <laughs> yes, you're as good as dead. I, and I kid you not, Abraham from Lagos, good to see you, I see you. You're as good as dead, and I kid you not, because this is one business that is dangerous. This one business that you can go bankrupt overnight. This one business that, listen to me, is no joke. One of our, our, colleague, our senior colleagues in this business started this business with $4 million. Okay? And I'm talking about back as 2003. So imagine the value of $4 million as far back as 2003. That's the kind of business we're talking about. Some people enter real estate business with 10 billion naira cash. So this is, not, this is not a baby game. This is not a baby business. And some people can bury you. It's as competitive as that. Okay? Particularly if you go into certain market. I remember a friend of mine was sharing with me how his boss wanted him to go direct competition with uh, in the so so in our industry there are different strategies right uh, when it comes to real estate so we now G Tech Homes where where that middle class in terms of our target market okay where that middle class you know level and it was intentional. We just couldn't deal with all these 100,000 people, 200,000 people who will not let you rest. They go on social media and say all manner because they've just paid 200,000. Now, and this my friend was sharing with me, they wanted to, his boss wanted him to go to that low level market. Those market where you tell people to deposit as little as 25,000, as little as 50,000. That was the market he wanted. And was ready to give him 10 billion to start. But he wanted about another competitor. He said, you know this guy fights dead. Right? If you really want to do this, are you sure you are ready spiritually every carry? <laughs> because you know who you are competing directly against. True story. You know, you know, of course my friends say I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna tell you the rest of the story. But the point is that this is no joke. Doing real estate is not joke. <laughs> okay, it's not a uh, baby you know, I mean, your 100 million will sink on one project and nobody even cares. In fact, the people you pay the 100 million to will look at you in the face and say, How much did you even pay, Seth? How much? How much? Let's even talk. How much did you even drop, Seth? That you let us rest. And I'm not kidding you. It's your customers that you see have this perception of, Oh, I paid them 10 million, I paid them 20 million. You, the developer, <laughs> it's a business. I, I had gone to do a deal before. And I begged them to allow me to draw 50 million many years ago, initial deposit. They threw the check at me. True story. This wasn't there. They threw the check at me. Okay, literally out of anger. Like, if I the family say, what do you think? Who do you think we are? Do you think do you think we are hungry here? Do you think we are hungry people? So if you're going to go into real estate, you need to understand the importance of mentorship. You need mentors okay you need mentors this is a business i've lost you know over 120 million before and i was of course <laughs> i've made billions today in asset in this same business so it's no joke with mentors the journey can be easy with mentors the risk can be minimal okay at least your mentors can defend you in the days of trouble if anybody is trying to you know cheat you um, they can defend you. I know a particular company I used to market for, you know, they bought this particular property somewhere. You know, one day they got to their property that they bought, okay, and somebody brought a cutlass that is going to cut off their neck, the neck of the MD. True story. You know, I mean, it took, you know, my friend who works there to calm the guy down. In fact, the MD had even run away because the guy... <laughs> So my friend was like, if you, so he said, I'm going to cut you, I'm, cut, I'm going to match at you. You know, and my friend is a very spiritual guy. I said, okay, what if you try to match at me and your match at did not enter? What will you do? Ah, <laughs> of course the guy looked, stepped back and said, who is this guy? But his own MD had ran away, had ran into the bush. If I was in the bush, I would say, come, come, don't let them match at you, don't let them match at you. <laughs> <laughs> because you're dealing with 
people who are not educated. You're dealing with people who can kill anybody and disappear. Nigeria is quite big. So you need mentors. With the help of mentors, you can do this business. They, you know, they know all the secrets in the business. When I do land business, I'm not the polish me you are saying. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm as good as Omonile uh, myself. Trust me. <laughs> so, uh, there's a whole lot to this business. And you need mentors to help you. Okay, some of you are all these put on suits, stay in the office kind of guys. And you want to make billions in real estate in Nigeria. <laughs> Trust me. Um, I'm not going to talk more than that because that's a more sensitive aspect when it comes to acquisition of properties and things like that. Of course, they, had to, they got the land back, but they had to. I mean, there are a lot of strategies, you know, involved in those trials, you know, that they used. And these are things you will learn. Um, you see, I keep telling people, and they don't want to believe me. If you want to do any business, your life wire is to have a mentor. People want to spend money, but, you know, on product instead of training and mentorship. And I keep telling people, I say, even if you don't have product, but you have training and you have mentorship, the product will come and the money you need in that business will come. But it's unfortunate as, as Africans, you know, we're not wired to know that mentorship and training is priority beyond product. Okay, so we focus on, you see somebody want to start e-commerce business, for example, they will tell you they don't have money for training, but yet they will go and put 10 million naira in that business until they lose the entire 10 million, they will not start shouting on the street. Now you ask them, why didn't you take 500,000 to go for training in that same thing? No, 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 that's too much for what? Why? What's the big deal? Okay, what's the big deal? You lost 10 million. Now you know the big deal. Like somebody said, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Okay? Number eight. Your first um, estate, but make it an estate inside an estate. That was how I started. The first property, you know, we, we, we got was through a mentor. Okay, he had 250 acre, we got 50 acre, out of his 250 acre. So it meant that before any problem would touch me, the force would have touched him. And because he is a mentor, he's ahead, he's more experienced, okay, most likely he will have weathered the storm, solved most of the problem on my behalf, because I'm just taking a portion of his own entire 250. I'm just taking 50 out of his own entire 250. And I think this is the one of the best method to protect yourself. In fact, one of the things I told that doctor in, in, in San Antonio was that, I said, look, what you should have done when you guys gathered money together, you wanted to invest in like having your own estate and be able to sell it to people, Nigerians in diaspora, I told him, I said, what you have done is to go and look for a, an existing real estate company, okay, who have maybe a very mass portion of land, buy bulk from them, okay, so that way, before any problem will come to you, you will have hit them first, and most likely they will have resolved it, okay, but for you to day one, and that was what the mistake they made, you carry to your 200 million, go and say directly you are buying from Omonile, you are in soup. You finished, okay? You finished. You know, I may not go into details, but there are so many mechanisms. If I, I have like ten, okay, acquisition strategies, more than ten, to make sure that whatever property we get is secured, okay? And so one of the best thing is when you go through your mentor. So when you have a mentor, particularly if your mentor now has his own estate to tell him, sir, can I buy ten acre out of your own? Can I buy five acre to start it out of your own? Can I buy 20 acre out of your own? Or the place you currently have, is it possible to buy more? And let me just put my tent beside you. And it's very important. That was one of the, as long as Lot was with Abraham, he was safe. I don't know if you remember. Type, I remember. If you are a Christian, you know, even in the Mus in, uh, for Muslim, they read the same story. Abraham's story resonates for Christians and Muslims. I'm not of you remember type I remember that as long as Lot was with Abraham, he was safe, he was protected. 
It was when they had fight and then they divided themselves. He went to Sodom and Gomorrah. That he lost everything. And you know the end of that story. And so one of the things I tell people about mentorship is that it's like coming under the wings of somebody bigger than you. And so it's hard for something to touch you. Okay, and, and I've enjoyed, let me say this that I've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed from from legal aspect to name it. Okay, I've enjoyed people who have just defended me in business, and I'm grateful to them. I'm really grateful to them. I'm not going to mention names now, but I'm really, really grateful. And you need that. So get mentors who will be able to at least cover you. Okay, and so most of the challenges that may arise, which are normal, you can't do real estate and not have wala. If I remember at the beginning, I was so reluctant doing real estate. I was so reluctant. I remember having a meeting with somebody, and I was telling the person, I said, You know what? I just, there's just too much issues with real estate from customers to vendors to this to that. And, and you can solve your name, you have built a good name, you can mess the whole name up. You know, they can mess everything up over what? I said, I'm not hungry. I, you know, which is true. I've been doing transactions in hundreds of millions before going to real estate. So, I'm not hungry. It's not as if I'm starting life and I'm hungry and I just need to, you know. So, and the person said this to me. He said, who is a billionaire in Nigeria who has not had a bad name? You know, I, I never forgot. I will never forget that statement. He said, give me Dangote. Is it from the time bank said he was owing them money and listed him as one of those to pay them their money back? Is it the issues he has had with his staff before? Is it land he had acquired that some people came out and said they are land? Is it of ten dollar? Right. And the person told me, he said, give me one billionaire in Nigeria. Okay? Who is an entrepreneur? I'm not talking about politicians who had not had his name soiled on in one issue or the other, whether rumor or true. So he said to me, he said, look, is it that you want to be a billionaire or you don't want to? The choice is yours. You want a good name, you know, nobody, you never have any challenge in business, fine, stick to where you are. But you want to go into becoming a billionaire and real estate is one of those things you're considering. Understand that there is a likelihood that issues will happen. Just be prepared for that. You know, it took me a while, but I later saw more courage and said, hey, you know, all die and I die. <laughs> this real estate thing will do up. But even when I realized that all the billionaires in the world invest in real estate, you know, and that one of the major ways to make money legally in Nigeria is three. Agriculture, um, which is very capital intensive to really do the billions part, which most people have not been able to do yet. Okay, so for you to be able to do agriculture well, you probably need to have been in real estate and then come into agriculture. And that way you can do transaction in huge volume, except you want to be doing this small. The other is oil and gas. Oil and gas, same thing, huge capital, right? It's not 100 million that you want to use to start oil and gas, trust me. So, you know, maybe I mean, in the, in the olden days, yes, okay, the entry barrier was little, but now you want to go into uh, oil and gas, it's, it's a lot of money, guys. A lot of money. So, for me, the most easiest one was real estate, right? The, the entry barrier was lower, okay, uh, and particularly when we started, so it was just the best thing. I'm grateful I did it, but understand that one of the best way to protect yourself is to make sure that you start you buy in bulk under an existing estate preferably whoever is mentoring you so for example some of you watching this may decide to say i have a hundred million to start this it's wisdom to meet the mdc of gtex home which is myself and say sir can i buy 10 acre or 20 acre you know, I want to start with the base. Like, you, I want to start with Kodu, I want to start with that one. Now, even if your mentor doesn't have in those locations, it's better he helps you do the negotiation. He knows this thing better than you. I would rather, and I keep saying to people, it's just sometimes people are greedy. I'd rather give my mentor 100 million. If you go and use the money and buy, and give me half of the land. 
Okay, at least I know when there's problem. Because he, he owns half of it, he will still have to fight, face the fight. Okay? Then to say, you know, you know, I, I want to have all the money, I want to have the profit, I want to have everything, and then lose the entire hundred million. It doesn't make any sense. A lot of times people are people are greedy and they don't know it. Okay? You want to win all, you want to have it all to yourself, just me alone. Okay, all the profit. And you don't even know you're greedy. You don't even know. Okay, by the way, those of you just joined us, my name is Stephen Akita. I'm Africa's most sought after investment coach and MDC of GTEx Homes. And I'm sharing with you how to start your real estate firm with 100 million or less. And I've had a great time. I've mentioned about eight points now. How many of you have had a great time? Type, I had a great time. Come on, talk to me. And I'd like you to share this video. Yes, share it 20 times. Copy this link, paste it on all your WhatsApp group, paste it on all your LinkedIn group, paste it on all your Facebook group. Share this video at least 20 times. Because we are empowering people here. We're trying to help people build wealth. Okay? And if they will build wealth, it's just the way around this. Okay? Um, number nine, launch your second and third estate with the same model. So, I made this mistake too. Don't say because you launched your first estate, you know it was an estate under an estate, inside an estate. It was good, now you have grown. At least do it, do it to three estates. Second estate to the third one. At the fourth one, you can now try it on your own. In other words, go straight to the family, do the negotiation yourself. And if you are buying from a third party who had bought from the family and is now reselling to you, fantastic. But make sure that at least you do it, you do that transaction three times. So your first, second, third estate, you do it maybe an estate inside an estate. I know what I'm saying. All this just helps protect you very well. To do direct purchase from the families has a whole lot of intricacies, has a whole lot of complexities. Okay, that you may not have built the system the structure to handle and to manage. And in many cases, people have lost their money entirely using that model, where they just want to buy directly from the families. So I tell people, your first, second, third, buy it through your mentor, buy it through, um, and uh, you have no business picking a mentor who is not into real estate, who is not successful in real estate. So buy it through. It's very, very important. These are wise things to do. Okay, if you're having a great time, type I am having a great time. Talk to me, guys. If I'm doing a good job, always let me know. Okay, people always tell me, and what I'm teaching you is coming out in a book. Okay, it's coming out in a book. It's going to be a very, very great book. You know, um, I've tagged it making billions investing in Africa real estate market. You know, it's going to be a massive, massive book. So, if you know that what I'm teaching is a powerful principle, these are not theories. You can't find any of what I'm teaching in any book. <laughs> these are facts of things I've tasted and I've handled. Okay? And as you know, that is raw and real. Okay? So, share this video with as many times as you can. I'm also going to take questions right now from many of you who want to ask me questions. I'm going to take questions. Um, so start typing your questions, any question whatsoever you have as it relates to starting your own estate. Okay, so the last point I'm going to mention is for those who would say, I do not have up to 100 million. Okay, and I've heard such experience. People say, I don't have up to 100 million. What you want to do is to start what we call a mini estate, and I've done video on that too. Start a mini estate. How do you start a mini estate? Instead of buying one plot, buy one one acre, buy two acre, buy three acre. You can do installment payment three months for you know six months. Of course, the the more months you add in, the more you pay. But you can do installment if it's difficult for you to raise all that money in bulk. Okay, but start with what we call a mini estate. So a mini estate is I'm just doing one acre or two acre. But the good news is that I buy that one acre or two acre, I leave it for a while, I sell one acre, I use the money I make from selling one acre to build the second acre. You know, and this has worked magic. 
a whole lot of people have done it in several places even when it comes to housing you can go to a, a very good location instead of buying um you know five ten acres you may not have money for that you just buy one acre you know do like four story building on it you know divide them into terrace duplexes and you sell off so there are always strategies around this even if you say well i don't have up to 100 million to to get started okay you have 50 million you have you have 70 million you, have, you can still start somewhere just you may just be that you have to start gradually you may not even do registration you may just start like a one-man business where all you're doing okay at that point is just to be buying the land securing the properties you know um small small here one acre here two acre there three acre there and at some point you know you can when you have enough of those properties and some of them have even appreciated in value you can just sell off some of them to use to raise capital, add more capital, start developing those ones that you have acquired. Now, in this series, I'm not going to development yet in terms of doing your fencing, doing your construction. Under recruitment, if you've got a good HR company that's supposed to help you get a good project manager and, and so on and so forth, who will help you and do the construction aspect of the estate. You can get contractors to do that. And I'm soon going to do another episode where I'll go into details of the construction part. But the first part is at least to have a system that works. The first part is to at least be able to buy the land and be sure you are not swindled and be sure that your land is protected. It's also one of the reasons why I always encourage people, even when you are buying just one plot or two plots, to buy from an estate because an estate protects you. When you're buying from a real estate company, a credible company like GTEx Homes, you know, they protect you. The estate will fence the, the entire estate round. It may take a while for them to fence it, but they will fence it. The estate will protect the entire land, including the one you bought from them. So you are sure that you can go and sleep. Nobody will take over, you take your land. Like, so when you hear issue of they took somebody's land, they took this, usually it's not an estate. The person didn't buy into an estate. The person bought directly from Omonile and it's just the way Omonile do it. If they sell you this land, they will move it to another place. Guaranteed. That's even if they want to give you the land. And in some cases they can move it to a place where they have even given ten people already. So you all start fighting each other over a single piece of land. So it's very important to know and sometimes the head of the family dies. Okay, the other ones begin to fight over it and everybody tells you stories. So it's just always better to deal with a real estate company. They protect you from all the headache of directly doing it on Manila. So you hear stories, people lost property. In many cases, those people were penny wise, pound foolish. I've, and I just think sometimes we are greedy. Let's say the truth to ourselves. Until you say the truth to yourself, you're not facing reality. Sometimes we're greedy. I remember um, hand, handling a question. By the way, if you have question, type your question. I'm going to take your question now. I remember doing a training in Baltimore like, this year, and one of the participants was complaining of how she had a business in Nigeria before she located to Baltimore. And the person she handed over the business to run the business to the ground. You know, and I, I found a way to politely, tipped, you know, inform her that she was greedy. Because I asked her a simple question. I said, did you sell some shares of that company to the person you handed over the company to? I said, what do I mean? I said, this is my company, 100% my own. I said, yes, 100% your own. But you are leaving Nigeria. And, you, you know, you are no longer going to be leaving Nigeria. Okay, it is wisdom to have told the person not to even give him for free. So go and raise social amount and buy, let's say, 20% equity so that we co own this business together. That way, the person knows that he or she co owned the company with you. And the person, I mean, she was shocked when I said, but I said to her, I said, that's greed. If I'm leaving Nigeria today, okay, which I don't have any reason to. And my Nigerian businesses, I still want them to run. I have to look for a partner that will co-own the company with me. That's the only way I can protect that company. That's the only way 
the company can continue to run. That's the only way somebody will run the company like his is or her own. There's a reason why in developed countries, by the time you are becoming a CEO, whether you started the company or you didn't start it, you will have some shares in the company. It is automatic. It's so that you can run the company as your own. It's so that you can push the brand like it is your own. You can't expect people to run a company like it's their own when they you have you, you are enjoying bottom. Right? And then they are the ones doing all the work for you in Nigeria. It's just not fair. It's greed that we don't know. African people want to own a business hundred percent. Hundred percent. You see them they must own it hundred percent. If it's not hundred percent, nothing else. You know, it must have seventy percent. You know, we always believe that volume equal quality and it's just a mindset. But the reality again is if you want to do those kind of things, and I've said it again and again, you have to factor in other people's interests. Human beings are naturally selfish. You want anything to last, factor in the person's interest. Period. I leave it there for today. Did you enjoy this? If you enjoyed it, type I enjoy this. I'm going to start taking your question. John Tubon says, How can we know a real mentor in real estate? How do you mean by a real mentor in real estate? What kind of question is that? <laughs> a real mentor in real estate is somebody who is into real estate, obviously. Result and amazing. Okay, the question is just whether the person is willing to mentor you or not. When you are picking mentors, it's purely based on result. Right? The person owns a real estate company that is doing well. The person should mentor you, period. The question is now, will the person be interested in mentoring you? Of course, no. Okay? No. The person will be interested in mentoring you. That's the truth. So, the job of getting the person interested is your job. Okay? How? Same model I told you. Human beings are fundamentally greedy. There has to be something you need for them. Is it that you are paying the person to mentor you? Okay? Or you are buying under the person so that the person knows that, okay, you are technically my customer. Okay? So there's nothing wrong in helping my customer succeed. That's how it works. Okay? That's why I told you that one of the strategies you can use is to buy under your mentor's estate. To say, okay, you have 100 acres. Can I buy 10 acres? Can I buy 20 acres? And I buy two acres, even if you want to do like a mini estate. That way, you know, you are factored in the interest of your mentor. Okay? Or, you know, in few cases where you have some real estate companies who run courses, who run trainings, go pay for those trainings and be part of it. But either way, you need to know that the way to know a mentor is result, period. The person has result in that field, in business. You don't pick a mentor based on sentiment. You pick a mentor in business based on result. Okay? The person runs a real estate company. The company is doing very well. You need the person's help to show you how to start. Period. It's as simple as that. But you always have to factor the person's interest. I always, I can't over it. Because if you don't, you will just be going up and down, you know, claiming that people don't want to help other people. And you are the one that is just being selfish. The day your own business grows, you will realize that you do the same. Okay? You won't just expect that you are just going to begin to teach other people what took you years to learn for free. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I mean, Israel now. Okay? And I went to all the places where, the places where Jesus even said this. He looked at the woman. Okay, and she wanted healing. He said, The food that I meant for children, you don't give it to dogs. Jesus said it. If anybody said that kind of treatment in this day and age now, they will say it's not emotionally intelligent. I mean, you hear a man of story. Jesus said it. He said, The food that I meant for children, you don't give it to dogs. And the woman was very humble enough to say, Look, you know, but I'm, I always say, it's in Two peas you can have in your life poverty and pride. Many of the reasons why people are poor and frustrated because they are poor and they are still proud. You can't just do the two. If you are poor, be humble. If you are proud, be rich. But you can't have those two together. It doesn't make any sense. You are poor and you are, you are proud. That woman told Jesus, 
She said, even the dogs, okay, eat from the crumbs that fall from the table. What a humble woman. Now, of course, you got what she wanted from Jesus. Jesus broke his protocol. Jesus broke his protocol. That was one of the reasons why, I mean, one of the places I visited here in Israel was, you know, it's even here, you know, um, you know, it's, it's not far from this place. It was where Peter had that revelation where the Holy Spirit showed him that the gospel was not just meant for the Jews. Because all through Jesus' ministry, he focused on the Jews. Anytime he met the Gentiles, he kept telling them that, forget that one. It's the Jews. Okay? They are my priority. So until Peter had the revelation where God was telling him that, don't call, you know, what I call clean or clean. Right? That, in fact, the church has, was built there. We went there. And it was some of the videos I showed you guys. So you need to know that to get a mentor, you need to come with humility and you need to factor in the person's interest. But you pick purely based on result. Because the person is the person very successful in the real estate business. If the person is successful in the real estate business, of course, you approach the person to help you, but factor in their interest. Goodness says, thank you very much for this great knowledge given to us free of charge. My question is, at the lowest level, what capacity of land will you advise we purchase to start, sir? I mean, I, I don't understand that question because I've already told you you're looking at 100 million. And I've said that if you're doing anything lower than 100 million, it's called mini estate. And in the case of mini estate, it means that maybe you want to buy two acres, one acre, three acres. Okay, so that you buy it, you keep it for a while. You later sell one acre when it has appreciated. Use that money to build the remaining two acres. Okay, so at that point, I think I've answered you. It's obviously a function of your budget. And sometimes, one of the things you can do is to open up, you know, when you are approaching a mentor. And I'm open for you to reach out to me if you're really serious. By the way, for those of you who are really serious about doing this, you can reach out to me. Send me an inbox message or send me a WhatsApp message. Okay? You can open up to whoever is your mentor. This is the volume I have. But please be transparent. I, I sometimes meet people who tell me um, I have 100 million and they don't have it. Okay? You start the process to helping them acquire a property. And then that's when they will now start saying the money I was expecting, you know, and it can be annoying because it means they are taking it for granted. Okay, so please always be open as to what exactly you have at hand, not what you are fitting to come in. Okay, but what has already come in. Okay, because a lot of us do this, you know, I'm trusting God, I'm fitting it. That's not what I'm saying. Okay, I'm the king of faith. I teach faith. I encourage people to have faith. Okay, but I do not, uh, and you shouldn't, in, in the name of wanting, using faith, lie. Okay, or not say the truth when you are in, in, a, in a, a deal where you need to open up. So, um, you, it's important to open up to your mentor. This is the exact cash that I have. What can I do with it? A lot of times people think, and I see that, you know, approach sometimes people do. They think that when they open up as to their budget, to a mentor, to somebody, maybe such people will inflate the prices of what they want to do. And I just laugh, which is not true. Once anybody is doing business with you in bulk, you have to give them discount. Okay, and prices of, of properties, at least the person has a website, your mentor has a website. There's a you can go to his website and know what is the price he's selling, whatever he's selling. So, I mean, opening up is just not um, negotiable. You know, Yoruba we say, uh, the Tobama, um, I mean, the person who will bury you the day you die, you don't cover up for such people, you don't try to cover up. The person who wash your dead body, you don't cover up for that. Okay, so it's important that you open up to your mentor, but there's no such thing as what's the minimum. There's no, there's no such thing, okay, of what's the minimum. What I just know is that at least with a hundred million, you should be able to do a good job. I can mentor you to start, okay, and I can help you 
convert that 100 million okay to at least 500 million in 12 months as a company if you're running it as a company that i can mentor you to achieve okay guaranteed that one is take it to the bank i can mentor you to turn a hundred million as a real estate company to 500 million in 12 months and that is even conservative you don't want to exaggerate or put a figure that is even the lowest ebb of that. you know a lot of people don't know there's so much money in real estate it's just um people don't know there is a lot of money in real estate, particularly real estate in Nigeria. The kind of money you make in real estate, you can't make it anywhere else. Whether you are running the real estate as a business or even as an individual, you buy land, all the land you buy, you know, you'll be shocked the value of those lands, okay, the kind of money you make, okay, in just 12 months to 5 years, in just a piece of land, one plot set. But the, mis the regret people always say is that they wish they had bought more plots. They wish they had bought more than one plot. You know, I've, I think I've shown you a story of somebody like that who was just regretting, just kept saying, Oh, I wish I bought more. I wish I bought more. Okay, I wish I bought more. And I've seen a lot of people do that. Who just, at the end of the day, when they realize how much money they will have made, just say, I wish I bought more than one plot. I wish I bought more. I wish I bought more now because at the point, of, imagine it, 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 my student who bought a place in a, in a Nikon Estate for 12 million, okay, and in 15 years later, the value was 220 million. All he was regretting was that he should have bought two portions. Because if you had bought two portions, you sell one, use the money of one to develop the second one and still have enough profit to do what he had wanted to do. Because he needed that money urgently to do something. But he didn't need the entire 220 million. All he needed was like 100 million. So what will he have done? You sell it for 220 million, take it, use the 100 million to do what you want to do, and then use the main 120 million to develop the second portion. But he only bought one. And that's one of his major regrets. So for those of you who are really serious about this, you can chat me up plus one six four six four two seven three three one seven WhatsApp chat only. Um, and we get to talk about how you can, you know, go into this as a business. But please not don't waste my time if you're not ready. if you're not ready. You know, when you are ready you can chat me up, but not not now. I love you all. Thank you for watching. Feel free to follow me across social media handle at Steven Akintayo on Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. And then at Steven Akintayo TV on Facebook and LinkedIn. I love you. Mm -hmm. Live from Tel Aviv in Israel. Bye bye.